What's up everybody? Today we're gathered here uh, to see if we can't rebuild this here carburetor. Uh, this is a Holly 4 barrel uh, 1850 carb um, and I got one of these kits. So these, this kit, uh, let me see the part number on it is 37-119 carb repair kit. Uh, straight from Holly. For 25 bucks this thing has a lot of stuff in it. I mean, hopefully snap this thing back on the Jeep and uh, get on down the road. So the first step is take out these six uh, bolts that hold on this part and then you gotta take out this tiny little C-clip right here that's gonna allow you to remove this whole uh, throttle plate assembly. And so now we're down to the carburetor body and there's a gasket that goes right here and we can take this gasket and set it aside. So with fi three Phillips head screws the electric choke comes off and there's a little tiny clip right there that holds it on so you just take that off and you can leave the arm with the carburetor. So there's your Holly electric choke. So the AP has these three screws that hold it on. You can see them right there and once you remove them you can just pull it off the body. There's nothing else attaching it. So if you take out the four long screws on the non-metering block side, there they are. They each have a little uh, like cloth crush washer on them. Uh, and then this part just slips out and this is your... Um, your float. Now next we take off these four longer bolts that are also eight millimeter. Uh, this bowl and so we can remove this uh, little gasket that sticks on these nubs, set it aside. This uh, metering valve, uh, mine was just stuck on there real tight, but a little screwdriver in here and you can uh, get it to pry loose. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get this thing off right now. And just like that, there's your, uh, your metering block, there's your power valve. Finally, these guys come out. They're just a set screw right down in there. Uh, you just undo it and flip everything over and that's what pops out. So now back to our special screws. It turns out these things are called clutch head screws and they have a special bit that looks like that. Now I found one in my Harbor Freight uh, kit. They found three different sizes of them. But apparently these are getting harder to harder to find. So if you need to jerry-rig it, you can actually take a Phillips screwdriver and grind it down uh, to make it work. But since I got this, we're just going to go ahead and take these six non-standard bolts out and so this is our little metering block that comes off of here and now we can also take this gasket off and set it aside and now we have access to all of these little ports we can clean them out clean them up and make everything clean now you might say Max there's a lot of tiny teeny tiny little passages in this carburetor how do we get make sure everything is clean so I use two things. One is compressed air, and when you use compressed air, you want a fitting like this one, where it's got a little rubber nipple on it, so you can get a nice good seal. The other thing you want is a fresh can of premium brake cleaner and a little red straw on it. And so what I do is I go around to every single hole from both directions and go, and you can see it squirts out here and it squirts back out towards you. Now you definitely want to wear safety glasses for this, and so what I do is I go through and I squirt all the holes from both sides with brake clean, then I go through and I hit them all in the same order with compressed air. And we definitely found at least three passages that were blocked that are now unblocked that blew a bunch of crud out. So that's really good. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing with the metering blocks and all of that. But that's how you uh, clean the body. So first we took out the uh, metering knobs in here. Mine were set to five turns. I don't know if that's right or not. They, uh, they look like these. Next step is you got to unscrew this power valve. It's a whole single unit. It's got a little gasket right here that comes out with it um, and you just need a pair of pliers normally to get that uh, undone. Now finally you can remove these two main jets from these sockets. Both of mine jets are 66H. So there is the accelerator pump taken apart. You can see it's in pretty bad shape. So uh, I don't know if there's a new one in the kit or not. The other thing you have to remember is be very careful. There's a little check ball in here. So. This is the actual accelerator pump, and so there's just a little spring right here. And I kept referring to the other thing as the AP, but really that is probably the secondary vacuum control. That would make a lot more sense. Um, and this is the accelerator pump because fuel flows past this little rubber bit uh, from the bowl into the AP. And whenever you hit the gas, it rocks this little arm down, pushing this, creating a vacuum difference that forces a little gas out the... Um, the squirter thingies and so again here nothing really going on we just got to clean the fuck all out of it it's pretty clean on the inside now the next step with our little carburetor saga is to try to reassemble it correctly and so the first thing is you want to pull your little gasket box next to you 
and find the gasket. So if you remember the uh, metering block that's got these kind of weird uh, weird screws on it was the first and there's a gasket that matches up with the uh, with the old gasket exactly so you want to just look at that and make sure all the holes are clear and so now we're just going to take it and install it and then next we want to put in the metering block on the other side now uh, this metering block had some damage here uh, I don't know what it's from but it looks like right here you can see there's there used to be a guide pin right there and you can see I had to JB weld it because there was actually a crack in there and so it was leaking fuel through there the other thing is I just noticed that somebody soldered this hole up I think um, I don't really know but we're gonna go ahead and put back main jets that were uh, in here I talked online to some people on forums and it seems like that's a pretty good size now there's a couple of gaskets that look like they could go here uh, but there's only one that does. It's this one, the little upside down kind of uh, hole. That's the one we took out of this location. Once you have the gasket laid down on the car, if you want to take your metering block and you want to take your new power valve with a new power valve gasket on it, it's quite thick. Screw it in and just hand tight these guys, which are adjusters for um, your, your air fuel, like lean rich adjusters. This kit does not appear to have new ones in it. One more thing before you put the metering block on, remember how there was a screw with a little thing on it? Um, that actually has little air passages in it so you need to make sure you clean them out and there's a new crush washer that goes between the screw and that body and it's uh, it's in the kind of general little parts kit. So now that all that is on, now we can really reinstall this gasket and you need to be careful um, because this ga the other gasket you can flip over either way this one only goes one way, and you, so you need to make sure all of the, uh, the holes line up. So we have our main valve screwed in here. We have our power valve and the power valve gasket. Now this guy can just lay down, uh, and there's one stud right there and one stud on this side, which mine is broken, obviously. Now that we got this sitting on here, remember, this is the side that has the accelerator pump in it. The first thing you're going to want to replace is you're going to want to remove this screw right here. This actually has like a like a hex part right there. And what that does, if you push down on that hex part, it ha has uh, two slits cut into it. And I'll show you guys what I mean in a second. To pull out um, this, which is the, uh, the fuel limiting device. So what you want to do now is you want to unscrew this top brass screw set it aside we have to reuse it there's a little gasket here which we won't reuse this part slips off you can see it's just grooved to fit and we have new ones of these in the kit as well of these uh, regulators as well as these gaskets grab one of our new ones put it in here set the new gasket on there grab this guy and use the key to uh, screw this all the way in so in order to figure out how far this needs to be turned in what you do is you flip the float bolt over and you can see this is parallel uh, with the bottom of the float bowl. And you can adjust the screw up and down, but just make sure that when you're done, this is parallel. And at that point, you can just lay down the gasket, lay down the little lock nut, um, and insert our little screw. And then we can tighten the screw while holding the, uh, the lock nut in place so to make sure we don't, um, we don't accidentally adjust the float. So there you go, now that that's all closed, if we flip it back over, it's perfectly parallel. So part one of rebuilding the bowl is finished. Next you want to remove the crossover rod and on both ends remove the little black rubber nipples. And the kit comes with a new set of rubber nipples. So next we take the accelerator pump cover off. Now one of the popular modifications people make is, it's pretty easy, you can replace this, uh, this arm if you need a better shot or less of a shot. From your accelerator, you can replace this arm pretty easily. Um, I'm going to leave it the way it is because I don't see any reason to replace mine, but uh, a lot of people do. And so that's when you do that. This is our um, AP diaphragm. We're going to set it aside. We're going to put in a new one. There's a spring. The spring we're going to reuse. And then in that floor in here, there is a little orange plug uh, that allows fuel to only flow one way. As you can see, mine is ripped. Um, the kit includes a brand new one of these. So first thing you want to do is you want to take this brand new one, you want to feed it through that middle hole, and then just kind of work it around um, until that little nub pops through. You can also uh, use a pair of needle nose to grab it from the other side, kind of help it along. 
And then if you like me, you dislodge this spring in here, make sure you put the spring back where it's supposed to go. Now that that new piece is in, we can put the main spring back in, go into our little uh, parts box over here. Here's our new um, diaphragm. This guy, it has a paper gasket on it. The paper gasket faces out, obviously, so you just put it like that. Put the little cover back onto it. And now if we work this arm, it's a lot stiffer, a lot better. Uh, and you can hear a little bit of vacuum being created. And there's got a little metal crush washer on it, and there is a new one in the kit. So we're just going to go ahead and install that and screw it right back in there. And like that. And just like that, uh, this bowl is complete, and we can find the right gasket for it, which I believe is this one. And it is also one directional. It should fit on all the studs evenly, and there's several cutouts in it um, that line up with little holes and stuff, so make sure that's correct. And then we should be able to install our fuel bowl. Um, and then this is the side that's going to use, obviously, the longer uh, four bolts. Um, these had little paper gaskets on them. Uh, the kit does not seem to have new little paper gaskets. Finally, we have our little adjusters. Um, these go into the metering block from the side, just like that. And from what I read online, you want to screw them in all the way and then back them out one and a half turns on each side. So on this other side we have a, a flow bowl again. Um, we're going to want to take out our little reserve screw. Next step is to take apart and clean uh, this actuator that opens up the secondary uh, butterflies. You can replace the check ball that's in here with the new check ball. It doesn't really make much of a difference. Uh, they don't include a new diaphragm so I'm just going to reuse this one make sure you put it back in the right place there's only one way this diaphragm fits in here like that and then this little bracket goes on the side opposite of where the main screws are so those new copper gaskets by the way fit like a charm in there so it's a little thicker than the original one but I guess it's designed to, uh, to kind of compress as you tighten up all these screws now, the choke has one of those uh, cork pieces backing it up to the carburetor. And you can actually take off this cover and there's an alignment mark here and you want the alignment mark on the case when you remove this triangular bit to line up uh, perfectly. And then there's a plus and a minus. As you can see right here, this choke right now is closed. For the choke to be open, that's fully open. So it's got to be indexed. And the way that the choke works is it's got a plus and a minus on here. And it's really basic, and there's a coil inside, and if you superheat a coil of metal, it's going to expand. And because it's a coil, it's going to pull in a coil direction rather than just pulling in and out. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up this car battery right here to this, and you'll watch. And it, uh, very slowly, this will begin to open. You can see, there it goes, it's fully open and it's springing back. Now as an example of the versatility I talked about earlier, this is our original gasket. This kit happens to have four different gaskets to sit between the, uh, the butterflies and the carburetor and, and only one of them fits, but I just meant to show that you know there's a level of redundancy in this kit uh, and allows you to do a whole bunch of different Holly carburetors. Now, it also actually had a um, a new gasket for the uh, for the choke, and so I went back and replaced that. And I didn't film it because there wasn't really anything to film. Um, but now we can figure out how to remount this bottom part on here again. And as you remember, there is a little wheel right here. Uh, that has to go through this piece right here. That's the bottom of the uh, choke actuator for the se vacuum controlled secondaries. Now, on this over here on this side, you want to make sure that this screw right here is on top of this lever so that it can actuate the accelerator pump. So if I hold this down, you can see when I hit it, it's hitting the accelerator pump. When I hit the throttle, uh, and this potentially, if there was vacuum on it. Uh, would 
then open the secondaries because when you open the primaries it gives the secondaries ability uh, to open and so there are six screws that hold this base plate on we want to make sure we got our gasket perfectly aligned uh, and then we can just feed those six screws in and they are all identical so you can kind of put them wherever you need to put them now finally there's two kinds of base gaskets depending on uh, what engine and what intake you're putting it on if you have a uh, like a four barrel intake you're going to want to use that gasket um, what I have is a big square hole on top of my engine so I'm going to be using this gasket it just lays down right here that's it for the car rebuild at this point we just got to hook up all make sure we hook up all the right vacuum lines in all the right places and of course get this thing mounted uh, back to the engine which should be pretty straightforward um, there's a ton of parts left over because this kit is really made to service a whole bunch of different car styles of carburetor so don't be discouraged if you have you know a box full of gaskets left um, just hang on to them they're they're good to keep so now I'm gonna go figure out how to put this back on the engine well the cool news is I got the flow bowls filled up and this is how the engine reacted on the first first crank <laughs> 